Well, good morning to you all. If you please take out your Bible, turn to Matthew chapter 20. Matthew chapter 20, that's where we're going to begin our Bible study this morning. But before we get there, there are, there are three things that I want to mention to you, three things I want to make you aware of. You know, all Sundays are special to a Christian, but for the Christians who worship here at Temple Terrace, this Sunday is just a little bit more special because here at Temple Terrace, this is our first Sunday, well, not just here, but everywhere, this is the first Sunday of a brand new year. And so that means there are some things that we need to introduce to you and reveal to you this morning. And whether you're a member here whether you're visiting from afar or whether you're visiting from this community, you will benefit from these three things that we need to show you and introduce to you this morning. The first thing I want you to notice is that you have a really, really nice family report this morning. You'll notice it's on some thick and glossy paper, and there's a reason for that. If you'll open it up, you look on the third page right here. This is our 2020 Temple Terrace calendar. And we printed it on this really nice paper for a very specific reason. We want you to take this home and keep it, all right? This is going to hold up for the entire year because there's some really, really important things that you need to be aware of. You need to know when they are. You need to come and be a part of us when we do these things because they'll be a benefit to you. We got some great things going on this year. We got, we got VBS going on. We have a gospel meeting with Dan Langford going on. In September, we have Ladies' Day that's going to happen in April. A bunch of very good and exciting things that we're going to be doing this year. And we want you to be a part of that. So please make sure you get that fam family report and you hang on to it because there are a lot of good things mentioned in there. Secondly, <clears throat> I want you to notice uh, in your family report on the news and notes section, there is a note about the sermon this evening that Brother Truex is going to bring to us. Brother Truex is going to preach to us from Isaiah chapter 6. Isaiah chapter 6. It's one of the premier texts in the Bible, and it's going to give us a vision for the coming new year. It's going to be a very good lesson, a very good lesson. You're going to benefit from it. Please be back this evening at 5 p.m. to hear that lesson. And additionally, this morning, we get to reveal to you our preaching theme for the year 2020. And that's what we're going to do with the rest of our time in this lesson this morning. That's going to be the focus of our lesson this morning. We're going to be talking about our new theme for this year, which is 2020 vision. Now I see. And I got to tell you, brothers and sisters, I am, I am very excited about this new theme, this new preaching theme for this year. And I'm very excited about the lessons that are going to be born of this theme. And so let's take a moment uh, to reveal that theme to you this morning. By way of introduction, let's start by reading, by reading that story in Matthew chapter 20, that story that we read at the beginning in our scripture reading. This will help introduce our preaching theme for the year 2020. In Matthew chapter 20, starting in verse 29, the Bible tells us this. As they were leaving Jericho, a large crowd followed him. And two blind men, sitting by the road, heard that Jesus was passing by, cried out, Lord, have mercy on us, son of David. And the crowd sternly told them to be quiet, but they cried out all the more, Lord, son of David, have mercy on us. And Jesus stopped. And called them and said, what do you want me to do for you? They said to him, Lord, we want our eyes to be opened. Moved with compassion, Jesus touched their eyes. And immediately they regained their sight and followed him. This account in the Gospel of Matthew tells us the story of two blind men who were sitting by the side of the road by the city of Jericho. And the story tells us that as they sit there, they hear, they perceive that Jesus is passing by. And what we learn, what we learn is that they, they know something about Jesus. They don't, they don't say, Jesus who? Who's this Jesus that's passing by? They know about him. The word about him has spread throughout the region. They know about his miracles. They know about his abilities. They know what Jesus can do. And so because they hear that Jesus is passing by, and because they know who he is, they cry out as he passes by them. And they say, Lord, have mercy on us, son of David. Have mercy on us, they say. And it's not hard to understand why they would cry out to Jesus, is it? 
It's not hard why they would say, why they would say, have mercy on us because, because they are blind. They can't see. And that is, brothers and sisters, as we all know, a terrifying affliction, isn't it? In our time, we have done much as a civilization to ease the burden of blindness, haven't we? We've invented a language. It's called Braille, a language that we have so blind people can read like those who have sight. We train seeing eye dogs to be able to guide people who are blind throughout their daily activities so we can afford them as much independence as is possible. For a blind person living in the year 2020, there are all kinds of aids and programs and tools that we make available to them to help them with the burden of blindness. Yet even with all of those things that we have that make life as a blind person easier, the prospect of blindness petrifies us. For some of us sitting here in this crowd, it is your greatest fear the idea of becoming blind. It is something no one would sign up for, something that scares every single one of us. And why is that? Because we want to see. Because when you lose your sight, when you go blind, you lose something that cannot be replaced by any kind of aid or tool or program. You can't see. And we all, we all want to see because there's something we lose when we lose our sight that cannot be replaced, especially, especially in the time of Jesus. The life of a blind person, the life of a blind person in the time of Jesus was a life of confusion. It was a life where you didn't know what was going on. When someone said, look over there, look at what's going on, you didn't know what was going on. You didn't know what was going to happen in front of you. You lived a life of confusion. And not only a life of confusion, but you lived a life of uncertain, uncertainty. You couldn't see the steps that were before you. You couldn't see what was ahead of you. You had to have someone guide you along the way because you never knew. You never knew what lay beyond the next step because you couldn't see. The life of a blind person is also a life of darkness. It's a life where you just don't know. You don't know what the sunset looks like. You don't know what your family looks like or your friends look like. You don't know what the world around you looks like. You are in darkness. You live in a world of the unknown. And that is something that we can, we can understand to a degree. That is something that we can sympathize with a little bit because that's something that we can simulate in our own lives, right? We all know what it's like to be blind because we've all been in an area where we are in the darkness, right? When you walk through your living room in the middle of the night with no lights on, you know what it's like to be blind because you can't see where you're going. And those are the moments that stubbed toes are made of. We all know what it's like to be blind, and none of us want to be blind. And so it's no wonder that when Jesus pulls these men aside, when he brings them to his side, it's no wonder that they say to him, Lord, we want our eyes to be open. We want to see. But I'll tell you, while these men were blind, these two blind men were not the only ones that Jesus encountered. The truth is that Jesus, Jesus came to a world that was full of blind men and women. And yes, it is true. It is true that the, the, the multitudes that followed Jesus, the majority of people that Jesus met were not physically blind. They had eyes. They could see. They were not in physical darkness. But it is true that the vast majority of people that Jesus met, they were spiritually blind. They couldn't see the truth spiritually. And so when Isaiah, when Isaiah prophesies about the coming of Jesus in Isaiah 9 in verse 2, he would, he, would, he would describe the world that Jesus would enter like this. The people who walk in darkness will see a great light. Those who live in a dark land, the light will shine on them. The world, the world that Jesus entered was a world that walked in darkness. And that does not mean that the sun didn't shine 
And it does not mean that everybody had their eyes gouged out. Nobody knew what was up and down or right or left. It means that they walked in spiritual darkness. They didn't know what was right and what was wrong. They didn't know what was true spiritually. Isaiah would add this later in the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 42, verses 6 and 7. He would say this, And I will appoint you, when speaking of Jesus, I will appoint you as a covenant to the people, as a light to the nations, to open blind eyes, to bring out prisoners from the dungeon, and those who dwell in darkness from the prison. Isaiah says when the Messiah comes, he's going to be a light to the world. And he's going to open up blind eyes. And yes, in a sense, that does mean, that is a prophecy that he is going to physically cure people of blindness. But in, in, in a bigger sense, that is a prophecy about him curing spiritual blindness. He is going to come, he's going to shine a light on the world so everyone can see the spiritual reality of life on this earth. He would be a light that would show the world the truth. And Jesus would say the same about himself in John 8 and verse 32, where he said this, Then Jesus again spoke to them, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Jesus came to a world that was spiritually blind, a world that was spiritually confused, spiritually uncertain, spiritually dark. Yet, it is through the power of Jesus. It is through the power of Jesus that, that, that not, only, not only when Jesus comes can the physically blind say, now I see. But the spiritual blind can declare that as well. Now I see. Now I see the truth. Now I see spiritual reality because of Jesus. And I got to tell you, brothers and sisters, the world that we live in today is no different than the world that Jesus entered 2,000 years ago. We live in a world today that still is spiritually confused, spiritually uncertain, and spiritually dark. Isn't that obviously true in our world? Isn't that obviously true when you, just, when you just drive down the street, when you see, even in this city of Temple Terrace, there are a vast array of different denominations, a vast array of different religions, of people who believe different things about what's spiritually true, about how to have eternal life, about who God is and what it takes to please Him. We live in a world of spiritual darkness, uncertainty, and confusion. Yet through the power of Jesus and the teaching of Jesus, any one of us living in this world today can say, now I see. Because Jesus helps us see the world as it is truly. Through Jesus, any one of us can say, now I see. And so that is going to be our theme. That is going to be our theme for this year. This year we're going to be talking about how Jesus brings us out of the darkness. How Jesus helps us see spiritually things. How, how, how He helps us see spiritual things clearly. We're going to be talking about how Jesus shows us the truth. How things really are in this world. Through Jesus we can all say, now I see. And that theme, that theme is going to break down along four different quarters. We're going to be discussing four different focuses as we deal with this theme. If you look on your family report on the, on the front page, you'll see those four themes are broken down for you right there. In quarter number one, we're going to be talking about open our eyes, Lord. You know, the truth is that, that, that God sees everything clearly. You know, it is true what is said in 1 Samuel, that, that, that God does not see as man sees. God sees things clearly. God sees things the way they truly are. In men, we do not see things that way at all. And that is true in two different ways. Number one, we do not see God the way He really is. We do not have an accurate picture of who He is. Our concept of Him is fuzzy and inaccurate. Our world doesn't see God as God truly is presented in the Bible. And number two, our world does not see this world the way that God sees it. We do not always see ourselves as God sees us. 
We do not see others as God sees them. And we don't always see the church as God sees it. And so in this first quarter of the year, we are going to strive through Jesus to open up our eyes and see things the way God sees them. And in our second quarter, our second quarter, we're going to be talking about we want to see Jesus. Because not only do we need to see God clearly, but we need to see Jesus clearly. You know, brothers and sisters, we look out there on the sign that we have out on the side of the road. It says we are the Temple Terrace Church of Christ. We are a church of Christ. And do not think for one second that that is a title any more than it is a description. That is a description of who we are. We are of Christ. We are in Christ. Our aim in this life is to be like Christ, to reach the measure of His stature, as Paul says in Ephesians chapter 4. And so it's important that as people who are in Christ and of Christ and trying to be like Christ, that we see Christ clearly, that we don't misunderstand who He is and what, what He's about and what He's done for us. We can't have a blurry view of Jesus. It's important that we see Him with 2020 vision. And so our goal in the second quarter of the year is going to be to look at Jesus, to understand Him better, to see Him for who He really is, for what He's really done. And I'm actually really excited about that second quarter. We've got a really, a really interesting idea about how to present that to you. So there are, there are a number of times in the gospel accounts where, where we read about Jesus going around. We read about the questions that Jesus asks those who follow him and those who encounter him. And there are several questions that you can read in the gospel accounts that are very, very interesting. Questions like this, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? Questions like, do you believe? Questions like, what do you seek? And so in this second quarter, we're going to be talking about those questions and digging into those questions so that we can see Jesus clearly as He really is. And then once we come into our third quarter, it's going to be called, I once was blind. You know, we realize that at some point in all of our lives, we were spiritually blind. We didn't see right. And ultimately, we have to ask ourselves the question, how do we end up blind? How did I end up having a view of this world that was so far off what it really is? How in the world did I lose sight of the spiritual reality? And what we have to realize, brothers and sisters, is that all of us ended up, all of us ended up blind in, because of the lies of Satan. That's how we end up blind. From the Garden of Eden, Satan has led men into sin with a campaign of misinformation, with a campaign of fake news. He leads us into sin. He leads us astray. He blinds us with his lies, as we're told, as we're told in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 3. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, in whose case the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelieving, so that they may not see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ. We are blind because the devil lies to us. And so in this third quarter, we're going to talk about the lies that Satan tells that blind mankind and bring us into darkness. And hopefully when we understand those lies, we will avoid, we will avoid being brought into darkness. And in our fourth quarter, our fourth quarter, we're calling it, but now I see. And as we do nearly every year, in our fourth quarter, we're going to focus on evangelism. You know, if, if, If this quarter had a subtitle, it would be this. But now I see, and I want you to see too. As as those who see the spiritual, spiritual reality, as those whose eyes have been opened by Christ and by His teaching, we have a responsibility to those who don't see. And that starts at home in our families. We want to focus on helping our spouses and helping our children see this world for what it really is. See it clearly. See the spiritual reality in this world. And that extends out from our families, from our spouses and our children. It extends out to our co-workers and our neighbors and the ladies scanning our groceries at Publix. We want to show this world what Jesus has shown to us. We want to help them open our eyes just like our eyes have been opened. And so in our last quarter, we're going to talk about... Helping others to see what we have seen. 
And that will be our preaching theme for this year. And as I said before, I'm very excited about this preaching theme because, brothers and sisters, we have to appreciate that the battle we are fighting to gain eternal life does not start in our flesh. The battle we are fighting to gain eternal life starts in our minds. It starts with what we see. It starts with the way that we think. And so we're going to talk about this year making sure that we're thinking the right thoughts, making sure that we see things as they really are. Because seeing clearly makes an eternal difference. With the few minutes we have remaining, I want you to go back with me to Matthew chapter 20. Go back with me to Matthew chapter 20, to those two blind men who are sitting on the side of the road. And we have just a few minutes left, but... but I want you to see, I want you to see some things in this story. I want you to notice some things in this story because because these two blind men sitting on the side of the road teach us some important things about blindness. They teach us some important things about gaining our sight. And as we discuss this theme for this year, we need to hold these lessons with us. So let me give you, let me give you really quickly three lessons. Three lessons from the blind, and then the lesson will be yours. Three lessons from the blind and the lesson will be yours. The first thing I want you to notice that we learn in Matthew chapter 20 is that everyone gets their chance to see. You know, it's amazing to me, it's amazing to me that Jesus happens to pass by two blind men who are just sitting by the side of the road. You'll notice in this story that these two blind men, these two blind men do not run all throughout Judea, all throughout Israel, trying to find Jesus. They can't. They're blind. And so these men don't encounter Jesus because they track him down or they race in chariots to go find him where he's at. They encounter Jesus because Jesus happens to walk by where they're stuck. The question is often asked in our day and in our time. What is God going to do with that person? What is God going to do with that person who is just so unlucky that they go their entire life without ever hearing the truth. They never hear about Jesus. They never hear about His church. They never hear somebody teach them what it takes to be saved. What is God going to do with that person deep in the middle of the Congo jungle that never hears about Jesus Christ? That's the question of the skeptic and the teenager who's struggling with their faith. We hear that question over and over and over again. You know what this story teaches us? This story teaches us that those who want to see will have their chance to see. God makes it possible, Jesus makes it possible, that those who want to see the truth about what it takes to please God in this world will get their chance. And this story of this two blind men is just one of the many proofs that you find in your Bible that shows that anyone who seeks to see will get their chance to see. I want you to notice this with me secondly. This is something else these blind men teach us, and that is this. Everyone who seeks to see will face opposition. Did you notice what happens in verse 31 of this story? After they cry out, Lord, have mercy on us, son of David. After they cry out for him for mercy, what happens in verse 31? The crowd sternly told them to be quiet. They cry out for mercy. And those who are following Jesus say, be quiet. They face opposition. They're told to be quiet. And yet, instead of listening to the crowd, instead of, instead of, uh, of accepting the idea that they're just going to be quiet and be content with their blindness, instead of listening to the crowd, they stand up and they cry out all the more because they want to see. And that's what happens to us in this world spiritually too. When we seek to see the truth in Jesus, we will face opposition. And sometimes that's going to come in the form of friends. That's going to come in the form of friends who before walked with us in darkness. And when I start seeing the light, I'm going to get criticized for that. And they're going to harass me for that. And they're going to get mad at me for that. I'm going to face opposition when I seek the light. Don't let that stop you. And the more direct application from this story, sometimes we don't like this reality, but sometimes that opposition... That opposition may even come from those who are following Jesus. Sometimes when I seek to see the light, I don't get the warmest welcome from those who are following Jesus. And these two blind men teach me that I shouldn't let that stop me either. 
I need to understand that everyone who seeks to see will face opposition. And if you're looking for the truth this morning, don't let opposition, don't let men, don't let criticism keep you from seeing the spiritual reality in this world. Overcome the opposition and you will, you will truly see. And this is the last thing that I think these blind men teach us. And that is that everyone chooses, everyone chooses either blindness or sight. You know, it is amazing to me. It is amazing to me that two blind men, two blind men came to believe in Jesus. Think about that. Two blind men came to believe in Jesus. You know what that means they never saw? These blind men never saw Jesus miraculously heal a leper. These blind men never saw, never saw Jesus feed the 5,000 or the 4,000. These blind men never, never would have even been able to see Jesus walk on water. And yet, in blindness, without being able to see anything with their eyes, they believed in Jesus Christ. And yet at the same time, it is those who could see. It is those who saw His miracles that rejected Him. It is those who saw His miracles that demanded more signs. It is those who saw His miracles that ended up putting Him on a cross and killing Him. It is those who saw His miracles that Jesus called blind. And that tells us something, brothers and sisters. That blindness or sight is a choice. I can choose to be blind, or I can choose to see. And if I, if I choose to be blind, it's not because Jesus hasn't shown me enough. It's because I'm unwilling to accept Him. If two blind men who never saw the miracles of Jesus could come to have faith in Him, so much faith that they would be healed of their blindness, then you and I today can believe in Jesus and believe in what He teaches. Whether I am blind or whether I can see is my choice. Jesus has done enough. And so this morning I ask you the question, which will you choose? Will you choose blindness or will you choose sight? Will you choose to be blind about what is true, what He has shown us is right and wrong in His Word? Will you choose to be blind about what He has clearly shown us we must do to have the salvation from our sins? The Bible teaches that if I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and if I'm willing to repent of my sins and confess His name before men, then I can be baptized in water to have my sins washed away. That's what the Bible teaches teaches us. 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 21 says, baptism now saves you. And if you're sitting here in this audience and you have not had your sins washed away in baptism, I got to tell you this morning, you can choose to be blind or you can choose to see. And that is your choice. If you've never been saved, choose to see right now. Come to the front and we'll help you while we stand and while we sing.